welcome uh, to this session on the uh, chemistry of uh, organic chemistry in biology and drug development. We are now in the uh, second, we are covering the second part of this, of this um, course and uh, we are already uh, through with the general concepts of drug design principles and followed by high throughput screening and combinatorial chemistry basically how to uh, how to arrive at a at a heat uh, very quickly and then we started discussing about uh, different kinds of drugs basically these are case studies so we have started with the uh, drugs acting uh, on the neurotransmission that means the neurotransmistry of neurotransmitters followed by the chemistry of antimicrobial agents and then we discuss the antiviral compounds and now today we will be discussing uh, the chemistry and uh, biology of a disease which is yet to be conquered and that is what is known as cancer. Okay. Now, some few words before we go on to the actual chemistry that how can we design drugs which are aimed towards eradicating cancer. Um, cancer still remains one of the most feared diseases in the modern world. Okay. It is known for a long time, but the actual cure or the proper cure is still not in our hand. According to the World Health Organization, it affected one person in three that means one in three person is going to die and that was the statistics in 2000. So, after that almost 20 years have gone by. So, cancer is uh, is on the rise it is not that it is uh, it is on the uh, downward trend. Basically heart disease is the one which is the major cause of uh, death followed by uh, followed by cancer. Okay. Now, the problem uh, of cancer that what is the problem with treating the uh, treating cancer is one problem is that the migration of the cells from one place to another. That means, this is a process which is called as metastasis that means, some that usually what happens that the cells which are forming my liver or my heart they remain at that position liver cells will never migrate to other position or heart cells will not migrate. But in cancer what happens there is a, a growth somewhere and that growth is so uncontrollable that it finally migrates from one place through the blood stream to any other organ or tissue. So, that is the major problem and that is what is uh, called the malignancy. So, okay. There are other types of uh, now this growth is what is called tumor that we know and if the tumor stays there that there is no metastasis that means that is what is called a benign tumor. Okay. So, a tumor becomes malignant when it has the capacity from migration of one place to another okay. and now the question is that is one major problem of cancer, but the question is why can't we get a cure for that. Uh, and the problem lies with the fact that the cancer cells belong to the to the host itself. Okay. It is not that it is caused by some organism coming from outside what is uh, that what happens in case of antibacterial uh, uh, bacterial infection or viral infection or fungal infection. So, you can use uh, different uh, chemicals to kill those and there is a distinction between bacterial cell life and versus the host. So, we can exploit that what is the, dif the differences that exist. The problem with cancer is that because the uh, it belongs to the host itself. Okay. So, while the malignant cells we are talking about malignant cells, uh, the malignant cells uh, have some minor differences with the normal cells, but there are some differences and that is the one which have been exploited uh, or tried to be exploited 
uh, whatever uh, the cancer, cancer development, drug development has progressed. Okay. So, what I am saying that because it belongs to the host, so there is only minor differences uh, or there may be some differences which are yet to be discovered. That is of course, we must uh, mention that there must be some differences uh, due to which some cells become cancerous that means, they have uncontrollable growth and uh, but whatever differences are known today. So, people have or scientists have exploited that. Okay. So, another point is that microorganisms uh, we kill by antibacterial agents that is true, but ultimately what happens that even if we take antibiotics then ultimately few cells of the bacterial origin will remain in my body. And now, the remaining cells uh, basically are taken care of by the immune system in our body. In case of viral infection, it is the immunity which is very important uh, to, to eradicate the, uh, the virus, the viral infection, but in cancer somehow this immunity does not work. Okay. So, the cancer cells evade the immunity. Now, one explanation is that it belongs to the host, immunity is always developed against foreign organism. Okay. However, if some cells become uh, what are called rogue cells, that means the cells which are not behaving properly, still the immune system uh, they are, uh, can take care of that. But however, cancer somehow evades that immune system. Again, I repeat what I am saying that immune system usually works against foreign organisms, but even in the case of host, if some cells become unruly, the rogue cells, okay, uh, there are uh, in that case also immune defense can work, but in case of cancer, the rogue cells, the cells, the cancerous cells, uh, they somehow evade the immunity. However, some uh, recent progresses have been made towards that aspect because if um, one has to develop a holistic approach to treat cancer, then possibly it is the immune system ultimately that we have to bank on, because immune system is, is a very general strategy, uh, whereas the cancers could be in different varieties, different forms, because it can be head and neck cancer, it could be uh, cancer of the liver, it could be cancer of the pancreas, each cancer has their own uh, uh, differences, okay, their own identity. So, the same drug cannot work for all the types of cancer. Some cell, some drugs work for uh, breast cancer, some cells, some drugs work for prostate cancer, but if you want to have a holistic approach, then possibly it is the immunity which has to be understood properly and then exploit that to, to kill the cancer. So, today basically what we will do, we will first uh, discuss that what are the targets for developing anti cancer drugs. We know targets are the most important that is the initial that is the first uh, aspect of drug discovery program that you want to know the target. It could be a protein, it could be nucleic acid or it could be a small molecule, all these are uh, targets. Now, after identifying the targets, then we will discuss uh, that different, different drugs against the identified targets, identified targets and then discuss their chemistry. Chemistry means basically discuss their mechanism of action, how do they work. Okay. Until I know that, we cannot uh, come out with a new, new molecule. Okay. The new molecules are based on the existing, existing molecules, existing drugs. Okay. So, let us start that um, we told about, uh, I mentioned that cancer cells have an uncontrollable growth whereas, the normal cells have a have a definite life cycle pattern. Okay. It does not grow uncontrollably the normal cells, when it is required it will grow, when it is not required either uh, it goes into a phase which is called a resting phase, where it does not divide uh, or if the cell becomes uh, bad for some reason that if the DNA is not 
proper it is if it is broken sometimes what happens the the they are marked to be destroyed okay and that is what is called programmed cell death or also called ap apoptosis okay so apoptosis is the is basically death of a cell but this is a programmed death not all cells are apoptotic okay some cells when the body's body decides that this cell cannot do the job cannot do the function properly uh, first it tries to repair that but if it that it is not repairable it is usually programmed to death okay on the other hand if the signal comes that i don't need any growth any further right now so the cells go into what is called a g0 phase or a resting phase okay but if there is this uh, mitosis that means when the cell division uh, b takes place so before cell division um, all the uh, this important molecules like dna has to be replicated and then the different uh, proteins have to be expressed so all these have to be done before the mitosis takes place okay so it all starts with this g1 phase and then g1 phase and then it goes to the S phase, this is G1 means the gap 1 phase, it is called gap 1, that means it is now preparing the cell for synthesis of the, the DNA. Okay. Synthesis of the DNA means the replication uh, of the DNA that is required. So, gap phase 1 and then after the synthesis is done, then there is again a gap, a gap phase 2. So, the it prepares the cell for the for the mitosis for the cell division okay so the first one prepares the cell for the for the synthesis and the second one prepare the cells for mitosis okay and um, after the mitosis means now everything is done so they divide and one copy lives with the uh, parent cell and the one with the daughter cell okay let's see i think i have a uh, yes now, this um, there are safety points like the checkpoints means if something is processed like in the making of a car. See, you have to make all the parts and then assemble them, and uh, finally put the every put the tires and everything, and it is ready to go. Okay. Similarly, in case of sales, you have to make all the uh, all the all the parts, but the question is whether all the parts have been made properly or not. So there are checkpoints, okay? And checkpoints means there are proteins which will see that everything is uh, working or everything has been assembled uh, assembled right uh, in a right fashion, okay? So these are the proteins like CDK. They are called CD kinase. They are they are cyclines. They are collectively called uh, cyclines, but they are basically kinase enzymes. Kinase is basically what um, does the phosphorylation, phosphorylation of the uh, of say serine wedge or threonine wedge, these are the common phosphorylation sites. Okay. Um, now, this some these cyclines actually they actually do the check, check that everything is here, yes, cell is well prepared. So, then it push the cell towards the synthesis phase and after the synthesis is done then <coughs> these there are other cyclines like cyclin a it checks whether the dna has been uh, has the correct information the copy has been correct or not okay if it is not correct then it will again it will now throw that's what i am saying that it will try to correct it if it can correct then it's uh, it's okay otherwise it will push it into the apoptotic apoptotic cycle and then once everything is checked everything is correct then you have this mitosis that means the cell division takes place okay in cancer somehow this process uh, this programmed uh, process does not take place cancer cells okay somehow it just goes on and on that means it always goes uh, via the G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase, and the mitosis, the M phase. Okay, all the time it is growing. So, 
that is what is basically it is a breakdown of the of the program of cell cycle that is uh, what causes what basically uh, causes cancer, but this is cause means this is the we are talking about the uh, the cycle that li uh, life cycle that why it grows all the time, but what causes this life cycle to break down that is the major issue because that is the major point between the difference of a cancer cell and the uh, and the normal cell. I think the whatever I said is it is written here control of cell cycle involves a variety of proteins called cyclines and enzymes called cyclin dependent kinases. Cyclin and cyclin dependent kinases, uh, so basically both are proteins, but when they are bound with each other then it can show the phosphorylation uh, power. Okay. There are 15 types of cyclin, 9 types of CDK each has a role to play at different stages of cell cycle. Binding of a cyclin with associated kinase that what I said that when it binds the enzyme um, activates the enzyme, uh, enzyme is the kinase enzyme, okay. the protein is the cyclins and this enzyme uh, uh, cyclin complex then checks the uh, basically serves to move the cell from one phase to the of the cell cycle to another. For example, when a cell is in the G1 phase, a decision has to be made whether to move to the S phase and start copying the DNA. This decision is taken depending on the balance of stimulatory versus inhibitory signals being received through signal transduction. Okay. So, that is another point. The point is that when a cell goes from G1 to S phase, then uh, that decision has to be taken. Now, the decision depends on that whether there is a need for growth or there is a need for uh, inhibition of growth. Okay. So, it depends on the various signal processing and ultimately the balance of that balance means what is the overall direction that whether to move forward or stop there. Okay. So, that is basically what it is saying depending on the balance of stimulatory that means which says that you, uh, you have to grow or the inhibitory signals which uh, says that do not grow. So, it is a balance between the two and if the balance is towards cell growth then cell division will take place and a particular type cyclin D uh, will be increased. Okay. This binds to the kinase 4, CTK 4 and CTK 6. Okay. So, that is basically it that the importance of this kinases uh, and there are drugs that means now you can say that if I can find a drug which binds to the kinase and stops the or binds to cyclin and do not allow the binding of the de uh, cyclin dependent kinase, then that will be uh, that can be a good um, way of stopping the uh, stopping the growth of the cancer cell. Okay. We will come back to that. Okay. Uh, I think there are some again some uh, points still uh, there. The resulting complex that means the cyclin and cyclin dependent kinase phosphorylate a powerful growth inhibitory molecule known as PRB, which normally binds and inactivates a transcription factor. Transcription factor is the one you remember that when the uh, transcription factors are one which actually starts the process of um, the transcription, okay. they are called transcription factor. That means from where the transcription has to take place, there are some promoter sites where the transcription factor binds and then the system knows that the DNA has to be copied. Okay. So, these transcription factors, um, what happens that when these cyclin, the C D K that means the kinase and the cyclines. Okay, they are they have, they form a complex that phosphorylates a powerful growth inhibitory molecule PRB, okay, which normally binds and inactivates the transcription factor. Okay, try to understand cyclin CDK complex and then there is a powerful growth inhibitory factor which is called PRB that is a protein a transcription factor. So, that becomes phosphorylated. So, phosphorylated PRB. 
this phosphorylated PRP binds an inact uh, binds and inactivates the transcription factor, which is necessary for the transcription. That means, the growth will be inhibited if the PRB is phosphorylated. However, um, phosphorylation alters PRB such that it no longer bind to the transcription factor, sorry it is the other way around. The resulting complexes phosphorylated a powerful growth factor which normally binds and inactivates a transcription factor, okay. the switch is making a problem. I think we will start from fresh. Uh -huh. ব্যাপারটা কি এখানে ইংরেজিটা এমন ভাবে রয়েছে যার ফলে গন্ডগোল হয়ে গেল ও যেটা বলতে চাইছে ফসফোরিলেশন করলে আবার প্রথম থেকে একটু কারণ এই জায়গাটা একটু গন্ডগোল হয়েছে একটু দ্বারা আমি বলে দিচ্ছি ঠিক আছে মলিকুল নোন এজ পিআরবি হুইচ নরমালি বাইন্ডস এন্ড ইনঅ্যাক্টিভেটস হুইচ নরমালি বাইন্ডস আর ফসফোরিলেশন নয় ফসফোরিলেশন চেঞ্জ করছে ট্রান্সক্রিপশন ফ্যাক্টরটাতে এবং ফ্রি টু বাইন্ড স্পেসিফিক রিজিয়ন্স অল্টারস পিআরবি সাচ দ্যাট uh, it can no longer bind to the transcription factor and the latter is free to bind specific regions of DNA. So, that it can no longer na thiki bol chhi lambo dhai dekhi. Thiki aache re, dara dara ok daki. Thiki aache, phosphorylate ko labor growth factor ta, thiki aache. তাহলে আমার ঠিক জায়গা থেকে বলবি আমাকে সিগন্যাল দিবি ঠিক আছে দেখে আসবে দেখো তো একটু দেখে না দেখছি আমি সেটা বলে দিচ্ছি ও যাচ্ছে ওকে দি উই হ্যাভ অলরেডি টোল্ড দ্যাট দিস two important proteins that uh, that play a role in pushing the cell from one phase to the other and the protein what is called the cyclines and the enzyme like protein is called the kinase that is CDK. Okay. Each cyclin has a counterpart uh, kinase okay. C D kinase. Okay. Now, what happens the cyclene and kinase that forms a complex and this complex binds to another protein which is called PRB and so the PRB becomes uh, phosphor so is becomes phosphorylated. So, it becomes phosphorylated okay. phosphorylated. Now, when it is phosphorylated then the PRB protein actually the PRB protein its function is that PRB protein binds to what is called a transcription factor. Transcription factor, transcription factor are the ones which will uh, which activates the genes basically. There are promoter regions, so it activates the genes. So, PRB usually binds to the transcription factor and in that bound form transcription factor is not active. Okay. So, it cannot promote the gene expression of the gene. So, what happens after the phosphorylation is done if the PRB is phosphorylated then what happens it cannot now bind it, it falls off from the transcription factor. So, the transcription factor is now free to uh, free to bind to the promoter region and the once it binds to the promoter region. So, there will be uh, activation of the of the of the genes and then uh, that will ultimately lead to production of proteins and these proteins are capable of moving the cell towards the S phase. So, we are talking about the cell going from the G 1 to G 2 phase. So, in that case PRB protein is very important phosphorylation means it cannot bind to the transcription factor and dephosphorylation means now. Uh, it is bound to the transcription factor. So, that is what is the nature's way of controlling the growth of a cell. Uh, so this is very important. So, phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. Phosphorylation again I repeat phosphorylation means the transcription factor is free. So, the cell will now go from the G 1 to the G 2 phase. Similarly, there are other checkpoints uh, like when the G 2 to S phase then S phase to the uh, G 1 to S phase and S phase to the G 2 phase that is also will be checked 
and basically G1 and G2 are the ones which are called preparatory stages okay, where this balance and checks are made and then the cell is pushed forward uh, for the M phase that is the mitotic phase. Okay. So, what I was telling that this kinases now you can tell that this kinases are important targets for discovery of anti cancer agents because that is a way to, uh, to control the growth of a cell. Okay. To sum up the progression through the cell cycle is regulated by sequential activation of cyclines and CDKs, a process which can be down regulated by the CDK inhibitors. What I said that it is down regulation means that in the downstream processing uh, that may when the when the cell moves further uh, further for the mitotic towards the mitotic stage that is called downstream processing. So, in the down it will be down regulated by the CDK inhibitors. Okay. The whole process is normally tightly controlled such that there is an accumulation of relevant cyclin T CDK complex followed by rapid degradation of the complex once its task is complete. It is so, so um, tightly controlled that this complex will be formed, phosphorylation will be done and then once the job is done then again the complex will be broken and uh, if the next cycle again the complex has to be formed, it will form the complex. Okay. Overactive cyclines, overactive cyclines means with several cancers, overactive cyclines or CDKs kinases means that the cell is going very fast. Okay. For example, breast cancer cells often produce excess of cyclines D and E and skin melanoma another type of cancer of the skin has lost the gene that codes for the inhibitory protein. There are some inhibitory proteins uh, which are which are uh, named as P16 or P53 all these are very important. This P16 is the gene where is which codes for the uh, it is a gene a gene which codes for the protein P16 okay. that is an inhibitory protein. So, skin melanoma when you study you see that okay, P16 is gone, it is not there. In case of breast cancer you see excess of cyclines, uh, do not be too uh, means just say that cyclines are more over expressed in case of breast cancer. In skin melanoma it is the other way around the inhibitory proteins are missing that means the inhibitory the corresponding gene is missing. Half of the human tumors lack a proper functioning of P53 protein which means that the level of inhibitory protein P21 falls. There are many inhibitory proteins P16 inhibitory means which inhibits the growth P16 P53 is the original one and then P21. So, these proteins actually control the uh, control the uh, the growth actually they have an inhibitory effect on the growth. So, what has been found that there is a lack of proper functioning of P53 protein, there is this uh, also the level of P21 and then as I said uh, in skin uh, melanoma P16 protein is, uh, is lost. Okay. So, that is uh, and in some of the there are different types of cancer I told you there are this viral related cancers both PRB and P53 proteins are often disabled. Okay. The virus disables this, uh, these proteins which safeguards our body. Okay. So, nature has a our body has a natural uh, defense mechanism via these P16, P53, P21 okay. and then PRB, but they are uh, if they are malfunctioning then the problem is that will be that will be growing very fast and also if there is excess cyclines cycling activity mode means more growth. Okay. So, you have some idea that what could be the uh, if you consider the cell cycle that what could be the uh, targets that cyclines could be a target cycling the kinase could be a target or uh, somehow you have to see why P53 protein is produced in is down is down regulated. So, you have to see all these and then uh, that is some differences with the normal cell. So, you can design molecules which will uh, which will activate or deactivate some of these. Okay. 
Now, let us come to the what are the uh, actual uh, the, the drugs that we have, what do they target. Okay. Now, as I said in the ACE phase means the synthesis part that is the synthesis. Now, for the before the the mitotis uh, this uh, your mitotic stage what happens you have to prepare you have to make all the molecules which are which are needed for a cell to uh, uh, to perform its activity okay now it all starts with what it all starts with the that first you have to the, the body has to get or the cell has to get this pyrimidine and the purine bases so they have to be synthesized biosynthesized okay and then you assemble sugar plus this pyridine or purine bases and then you what you get is the ribonucleotides okay coming from ribose then ribonucleotide is uh, ribonucleotide is reduced to what is called deoxyribonucleotide because you know that the 2 prime OH is missing in the DNA but that actually comes from the ribonucleotides and uh, ribonucleotides then the ribo deoxyribonucleotides uh, basically they form the double stranded DNA and from the DNA you get the messenger RNA and finally, the messenger RNA gives the proteins which are enzymes and also they uh, get, uh, they also produce another proteins these are called microtubules which are extremely necessary to segregate the, the cell into daughter cells okay, that mitotic uh, process. Hmm. And um, so, basically what you need for the for the cell to complete the S phase and then go to the uh, M phase uh, to the G 2 phase, see you can stop any of these or even if a cell is in the uh, is in the resting phase, uh, you can target target the cell uh, by targeting any of these processes. Okay. So, everything is a target like if you target the formation of the ribonucleotide. Okay. So, you have a you, you, you have a drug because that cannot proceed further you can target this enzyme which is called ribonucleotide reductase because then the deoxyribonucleotides will not be produced. You can directly target the DNA directly target the DNA. So, that the process of transcription does not take place or replication does not take place and then you can target the messenger RNA also that is possible like I gave you some example that the messenger RNA cannot uh, the flow of information cannot uh, take place if you use what are called antisense compounds that which binds to a portion of the RNA okay, uh, by use of the antisense RNA and then the translation process will be stopped. So, you can stop the translation process and then at the enzyme level you can also you can also target different uh, enzymes which are vital for the uh, for the growth of the cell okay. and uh, also microtubules because this is the one uh, which does the, the which does the cell division. Okay. So, and so these are the different targets and on both sides you have different kinds of drugs. Okay. I am not naming those drugs, but we will take few of these that how do they really work. Okay. Now, out of these all these um, all these targets you can say that the best target to destroy a cell is the nucleic acids the DNA because DNA is the uh, is the basically the the commander in chief of this cell cycle whatever is going on all the cell processes. So, if you kill the commander in chief then because all information is coming from the commander. So, the whole battalion will fall. Okay. So, that is exactly what happens the first the major target of anti cancer drug development is the nucleic acids and followed by uh, other different processes I will tell you that uh, I will just take not all because this is itself is a is a lecture by itself is a not a lecture but a course by itself the development of anti cancer drugs, but we will try to finish up as quickly as possible uh, just taking some of these uh, some of these as the 
uh, key examples like method track set. Okay. We have already done the method track set. Method track set what it does? It uh, stops the inhibits the dihydrofolate reductase, which is important for making the uracil uh, for the thymine from uracil. Okay. So, that is one of the earliest anti cancer drug that was developed. Now, let us uh, go one by one, hmm, I think. So, first we will go by the DNA as the target, nucleic acid as the target. Okay. Now, nucleic acid, uh, how many ways you can target the nucleic acids? It says by alkylating agents. What are alkylating agents? Alkylating agents are nothing but like if you have a phenol, if you add methyl iodide, the phenol will form OAB. If you have a nitrogen amine and if you add uh, say again methyl iodide or dimethyl sulphate uh, or even diazomethane that will be that will form the alkylation, the N alkylation. Now, there are different alkylation, N alkylation, C alkylation, O alkylation, S alkylation, all these are possible. So, alkylating agents, what they do in DNA actually the most nucleophilic part is the bases. We have nitrogen bases and there are the, the nucleophiles that are present. And out of these nucleophiles, uh, it is if you uh, if you prove the structure of all these bases, you will see that guanine has a very strong nucleophilic nitrogen in the form of a um, in the form of that imidazole part, because guanine is imidazole fused pyrimidine and that imidazole nitrogen uh, which is by the way called N 7 nitrogen that is the most nucleophilic part. So, what happens if you have a alkylating agent not a single alkylating which has got the ability to make suppose X and it has got Alkylating agent means you should have a good living group, a nucleophile comes attacks and this leaves. Okay. So, if you have a bis alkylating agent, so one nucleophile comes from here, another nuclear nucleophile comes from here and both leaves. So, what you will have? You will have a bis alkylation. Okay. So, if you have this DNA which is double stranded and if you can do a bis alkylation, so what will happen to the DNA? The DNA will now uh, see the, again, there are different types of cross linking. You have this DNA like this. So, what I am saying that suppose there is a G here, the G is cross linked, and then there is a G here that is also cross linked. So, that means this cross linking is what? This cross linking is between two strands, this strand and the other strand, there is a cross linking. So, basically, after cross linking, it will become something like this. So, that will be bent at that point, but the most important point is that as there is a cross link. So, these two strands cannot be separated there, you cannot separate at that point, because there is a knot there. The other, other type of uh, alkylation that can happen is that the same strand that is called this is called inter strand cross linking inter, you can have intra also, intra means the same strand like here there is an alkylation site and there is an alkylation site here. So, you now join these two. So, the whole thing becomes a kind of a oval shape at that point and that also see the fall uh, the fallout of this is basically your replication and transcription stops, because you have a deformed DNA in this case and in this case there is a knot which you cannot release uh, that is not possible. Okay. So, that is alkylating agent chain cutters that is even more direct that you have a agent which cuts the breaks the double strand DNA into two pieces. So, I just shown in a um, in this form in this cartoon picture this is the double stranded DNA you have a scissor these are these chain cutters are also called artificial scissors. Okay. Intercalating agents intercalating agents means DNA is double stranded and you have these bases and there are certain uh, planar aromatic compounds which can go inside there is that is lot of space between these base pairs and then another flat aromatic ring uh, can go inside and uh, then sit there and stabilize the DNA that is what is called intercalation. So, if there is intercalation then also it will require lot of forces first of all to separate because another stabilizing force is, uh, is there okay, as the intercalated, intercalated uh, molecule. And also, there will be change of shape, because to accommodate that intercalating agent, the DNA has to 
has to change a little bit to accommodate that that partner. Now, you can say why it is accommodating it because overall it gets a stabilization because it is called pi pi stacking. See the base pairs have a pi cloud and then you have an, a, a planar aromatic uh, kind of system and then another base pair. So, if there is always pi pi stacking that stabilizes the DNA. So, these are the three different types of uh, D, uh, DNA uh, stopping the DNA from transcription. Okay. But there is another way of stopping the transcription is topo isomerase inhibition. Topo isomerase you know that when the DNA unwinds there is this super coiling in front. So, topo isomerase takes care of that super coiling, but if you can inhibit the topo isomerase then also your transcription will uh, will will stop. Okay. So, these are the four classes of agents that will target the basically the transcription process the replication and the transcription process. The first the one of the drug which goes via intercalation is what is called doxorubicin. Doxorubicin is you see doxorubicin has this aromatic ring it is an anthra, anthraquinone based compound uh, called anthracyclines uh, because not only anthraquinone you have a cyclic part here these are called anthracyclines and they are planar. So, they go inside. Uh, this is the molecule which goes inside the double stranded DNA. So, this is dox DNA that means, it is already the doxorubicin is inside. So, when it is inside you uh, it cannot uh, replicate or transcribe uh, trans undergo transcription properly. So, this is doxorubicin is one which is it is trade name is adriamycin, it is a chemotherapeutic medicine to treat cancer it binds to DNA through intercalation. So, what is the mechanism through intercalation? So, basically weak forces that play part here no, no covalent forces. Okay. It is used for many many cancers breast cancer, bladder cancer, Kaposi sarcoma this is a kind of skin cancer, lymphoma then acute so, so many uh, leukemia. Okay. However, always remember I told you there are different types of cancer, um, different types of cancer. So, only one single reagent cannot uh, cannot cure the cancer. Okay. So, you have to give a cocktail of different anti cancer drugs. So, whenever doxyrubicin is given at the same time other anti cancer drugs are also given which work on a different principle. So, that the cells do not become resistant later on because here also the cancer cells become resistant to the drug which is used earlier which has been used earlier and by a mechanism which is the efflux mechanism I told you that the some of the bacterial cells also have that efflux mechanism that it pumps out the entering drug. So, these cancer cells also have very efficient efflux mechanisms and then can uh, remove the drug. Uh, very quickly, so that it cannot enter the cell. Okay. Topo isomerase inhibition I told you that if you can uh, inhibit the topo isomerase, uh, then you can also get uh, anti cancer action and this is a very important natural product called camptothecin. Camptothecin is the one which, uh, which actually here it says topo isomerase inhibition in bracket poisons. Actually what happens here inhibition is um, in topo isomerase remember what I said at that time in during your transcription that there is positive that super coiling ahead of the replication fork. So, to bypass the super coiling to reduce the super coiling what the topo isomerase does it forms a nick at some point and then it turn it uh, over the other strand. So, that the super coiling uh, super coiling effect is not failed and once the uh, once your replication uh, fork proceeds then it again comes back and closes that whatever nick it has produced earlier. Okay. Now, what happens in this case tropo isomerase forms the nick and then this nick is basically stabilized that DNA part with the nick is stabilized by the tropo isomerase. Now, what happens this uh, this camptothecin what it does it usually that uh, that topo isomerase and the nick DNA complex is very transitory. 
transitory means it has to be transitory because as the replication fork moves it has to again join it back. So, but the camptothecin molecule or this type of topo isomer is uh, inhibition molecules they uh, what they do they stabilize that whatever was transient earlier they stabilize that nick DNA topo isomer is complex. So, that is why it is usually uh, sometimes called poison it is a topo isomer is poison truly it is not an inhibition actually the topo isomer is first do the uh, first does the uh, the job of nicking forms a transient complex and the transient complex again uh, is uh, is broken and the nick is again repaired but here the repairing process cannot take place because the transient complex is stabilized okay so that is camptothecin and there are different analogs of camptothecin people have made and those are uh, also used as drugs okay you just see the type of uh, type of uh, heterocyclic framework that camptothecin has it has this is called a uh, quinoline and this is an isoindole. So, that is the that is the part, but the thing is that this is also quite planar in that sense. So, it can go and uh, somehow stabilize the DNA topo isomerase complex, nick DNA topo isomerase complex. Okay. Now, let us come to the alkylating agents, it also says metallating agents because alkylation also can be done by it is not alkylation, sometimes what happens you can have a metal ion and that is stabilized by because these whatever are nucleophiles can be good ligating agents also to metals. Okay. So, this is also possible a metal ion is bridged between the two base two bases of uh, of the st of, of different strands and that also forms what is called double metallation. Okay. Double metallation is nothing but double alkylation. Okay. So, now the alkylating agent as I told you this is the nitrogen which is most susceptible to the this is N 7 most susceptible to the uh, your uh, attack N, N alkylation and also the cytosine this nitrogen N 3 because of this nitrogen lone pair and here because of this nitrogen lone pair. So, that increases the nucleophilicity. So, let us see what are the structures of this alkylating agents. Now, there is a history behind discovery of this alkylating agent. There is a compound which are called sulfur mustard because sulfur mustards look like the it is yellowish in color look like a, a mustard, mustard also has yellow color. Okay. So, this is the compound called sulfur mustard and um, sulfur mustard is very interesting that it is a double alkylating agent and the alkylation proceeds via what is called neighboring group participation that the sulfur first attacks the carbon the chlorine is lost and that forms what is called an ap sulfide like your epoxide. So, it is an ap sulfide and then uh, you have this CH 2 C L. So, this becomes plus now the suppose the G with the nitrogen comes here attacks there and the sulfur opens up and the process is repeated again another G comes here and then via the new neighboring group participation uh, it becomes. So, this belongs to the either could be the same strand or it could be uh, belong to the different strand. Okay. Now, this uh, this sulfur mustard is a highly cytotoxic agent and vesican, vesican means which causes blister and it was used in world war 1 as well as world war 2 and also in recently uh, in the in the gulf also this has been used. Uh, in Syria and uh, parts of Iraq. Okay. So, this compound uh, basically at that time it was in world war 1 and 2 what was happened that this was used as a as a chemical warfare agent, hmm. but what they found that the persons who have been uh, who have been exposed to the sulfur mustard. So, when they uh, analyzed their blood count what they found that they have a uh, they develop they develop what is called a leukemia. Okay. And why uh, leuco no, leukopenia is low, low white blood cell count and um, with a bone marrow aplasia defective development. Okay. 
and ulceration of the so lot of biological effects. Again, I repeat low white actually it is a low white blood cell count that is sulfur mustard and then bone marrow aplasia which means defective development that means it has got some effect on the growth of the cell because defective development means it has some effect on the growth. Now, all these all these lesions, lesions means whatever the inflammation that we are talking about like ulceration, defective development all these things have a profound effect on rapidly dividing cells suggesting that these compounds might be effective as anti tumor agents. So, this is basically a direct fallout of the world war 1 and then mustards came into the market after the world war 2. Okay. Because people realized that apart from this uh, chemical as chemical warfare agent apart from producing the blisters all these things, uh, but it actually also it works by uh, rapidly dividing cells it stops the rapidly dividing cells from dividing that means, what are the rapidly dividing cells it is the cancer cells. So, it will have effect on the cancer cells and uh, however, this sulfur mustard is extremely unstable. So, what they resorted to is what is called nitrogen mustard. So, they uh, nitrogen mustard they are related to sulfur containing mustard gases which was used in world war 1 that I already said nitrogen mustard give you a uh, give you some uh, some ways to manipulate the structure because remember sulfur is bivalent. Okay. So, you cannot attach anything on the sulfur except the two alkylating arms, but if you have a nitrogen then apart from these two the chloroethyl handles which are alkylating agents you have a NH here. So, you can put a R group here and that R group can be uh, can give you the stability. Okay. Here the mechanism is that instead of the AP sulphide you will get aziridinium ion as the uh, as the transiently formed uh, transiently formed reactive species, okay. but here also this anchimeric assistance is taking place. Now, depending on the R you have different you have different uh, alkylating agents. The first alkylating agent uh, which is used as a drug was this chloromethane. Chloromethane is nothing but you have a methyl here okay. and that is the mechanism the guanine is attacking here and then another guanine is attacking the other aziridinium ion. So, the result is that you have a intermolecular cross link this is intermolecular remember this is the or check this is this for this strand and the other alkylation is for this strand. Uh, so, that is intermolecular strand uh, you can also have as I said you can have intermolecular also like this guanine from the same strands are uh, attacking are reacting with that nitrogen mustard. So, basically this will stop the transcription process. Now, however, these molecules uh, uh, these molecules were very toxic in the sense that they are so small molecules that they they can react with other protein molecules inside the body before it is entering a cancer cell. Okay. So, they are not they are not the uh, very good anti cancer agents because of their toxicity they can destroy the cell very rapidly, but they are not very uh, specific in that sense. Okay. So, ultimately uh, research ultimately on this anti uh, this be alkylating agents gave rise to this drug cyclophosphamide. Okay. Cyclophosphamide if you look at the molecule here the nitrogen lone pair is now delocalized with the phosphorus oxygen double bond. So, the nitrogen lone pair cannot form the aziridinium ion because the nitrogen is lone pair is locked because it is towards the phosphorus oxygen atom okay. that is a more electron withdrawing group. So, how can that means it is not a by itself it is not a drug. So, you have to activate it activate means ultimately you have to break this nitrogen phosphorus bond. Okay. How was it uh, possible that what happens when it goes to the through the liver there is enzyme that uh, the oxidation takes place 
and specifically hydroxylation P450 is a mono oxygenase enzyme, mono oxygenase you know where it delivers one oxygen atom into the molecule that means does hydroxylation. So, hydroxylation takes place at this carbon and then this is nothing but an aminal, uh, aminal means like acetal, but here one of the uh, oxygen is replaced by a nitrogen, this is also not stable. So, this becomes uh, an aldehyde, the amine is free and once it becomes aldehyde, the hydrogen is lost here. So, you get acraldehyde and what you get is this compound, okay. still the nitrogen is locked with the phosphate. After that there is a hydrolysis, this is continuous by water you can hydrolyze this molecule, water comes and then breaks this. So, uh, basically it releases the nitrogen mustard in the actual form uh, where the nitrogen is in it. So, now it can alkylate the DNA and um, it can monoalkylate because sometimes what happens when it becomes too reactive water can also displace the, the chlorine. So, there could be monoalkylation there could be bisalkylation also, but this is the way in monoalkylation also it is difficult for the for the DNA to replicate because the DNA will be mis, uh, miscopied, they may not realize that this is a guanine. Okay. So, there may be miscopying possible. So, this is the mechanism. So, that means cyclophosphamide is what is called a pro drug. Pro drug means it is not the actual drug, but in the biological system it is activated and the actual drug is nothing but this compound and that is released. So, that is all about the uh, the nitrogen mustard, if you want to know the mechanism also uh, other thing that can happen I should tell you. When you add the alkylating agent, the guanine is the specifically is more preferentially alkylated okay. and as a result there will be there will be bisalkylation uh, because it is a bisalkylating agent and there can be intermolecular or intramolecular uh, bisalkylation, but both causes the stoppage of the uh, the replication and the transcription process. Another thing that can happen that the DNA can lose the base when there is uh, this type of alkylating alkylation takes place, their DNA may be there, but in one of the DNA the base may not be there. So, it is basically only ribose, deoxyribose and the phosphate, no base is attached at the site. This is what is called a basic site. A basic site means the base is not there, that means there is depurination or what you say that the, the guanine has left. How, do, how does it left? leave? It is basically you know the what is called Maxim Gilbert sequencing method that exactly what happens there that you have an alkylating agent dimethyl sulphate followed by hydrolysis. Okay. So, that takes care of the first the base goes out and then the phosphodiester bond breaks, okay. but that break that breakage is carried out by if you remember that is carried out by piperidine. Here the base is not present means piperidine is not present. So, what happens after this um, after the alkylation n plus water comes and attacks this carbon and which ultimately results in the hydrolysis of the, uh, the results in removal of the base because see if you look at the mechanism first there is plus charge water comes. So, that the electron goes here then if this is an aminal. So, the this will become an aldehyde and that will become a uh, that will become a nitrogen NH and then NH opens up the sugar and this is an imine and imine is hydrolyzed. So, basically the base goes out. Okay. So, deep that uh, one of the base can come out, but usually it is the guanine that comes out. So, what will happen to that? for the when it is copied if the base is missing. So, the enzyme that is the polymerase can now interpret that uh, it could be any base. So, it can produce uh, some different base which is not required in the in the e mRNA. So, that also cause uh, mutation. Okay. I think that is all about this um, alkylating agents. Now, they have made different types of stable alkylating agents which are quite interesting that you can start with aziridine because these are not aziridinium ion if it is aziridinium ion that will be more reactive. So, you can have a simple molecule like this, this is a trialkylating agent here the here the driving force is that if the nucleophile attacks here that goes there 
and because of this imine nitrogen, uh, the bond breakage becomes very fast. So, it is a trialkylating agent, this is a bis alkylating agent. Here, the driving force is that the nucleophile attacks here, that goes there, that can go there, and ultimately that becomes O minus. Okay. So, different types of molecules are, po are possible, all are uh, working by alkylation, and uh, but these are more stable than what we have said earlier. Uh, cyclophosphamide is quite stable because the nitrogen lone pair has been locked in a pro drug form uh, to start with. Okay. So, that is all about the bisalkylating agents. In the next session, we will talk about the other kinds of drugs. Thank you.